Hello, this is Gabi from TruePixel and in this video I want to introduce Cinema 4D user interface to you. The user interface is basically the first thing we see when we open the software for the first time. Some of you may see it like this and some of you may see it like this. Don't be scared, we're gonna get back to it in a minute. Let's go back to the main viewport. This big area here is where the magic happens. This is where everything starts and where everything ends. If we create an object, we can edit, model, and by adding more objects, we can create a scene. Let's focus now on the top bar and the top menu and see what happens and what can we do with the buttons that we have there. First, we take this area, of course, we have the undo and the redo button. Then we have this area here with these buttons that I'd like to call the control buttons. These are the most commonly used buttons in Cinema 4D. Let's see what they do with the object that we already have placed in the scene. First, we have the selection tool. The selection tool helps us select objects and it highlights them with an orange line. This shows us that the current object is selected. Then, if we want to move the object, we have the Move tool. This tool gives us the freedom to move the object in the direction the arrows are pointed. These arrows, all together, are called the axis. We can move the object wherever we want or we can freely move it by just picking up with the cursor and moving it freely. The third button is called the scale tool. If we press it and select the object we want to scale, we can make it larger or smaller proportionally. And the last tool that we have in this control group is the rotate tool. If we select the object, we can see now that the axes have turned into round axes that allow us to rotate the object in the direction we desire. Feel free to practice the rotation tool, the scaling tool, and the movement tool, because you will be using them a lot. Now, the next set of buttons I want to show you are these render settings buttons. The first button allows us to render the scene directly in the viewport. The second button will render the scene in an external picture viewer that also saves the file. And the third button allows us to change the render settings for the final output that we want to achieve. We will cover more about the render settings in a future video. The next area I want to focus on is this one. It holds the object and scene creation tools. This area is very important because everything you want to create in a scene starts from here. For example, we have objects that are called primitives which you can use to achieve other objects and transformations and elements you want to insert in your scene. Then we have the pen sketch splines, all sorts of lines and vectorial lines. Then we have all sorts of effectors and uh, tools to manipulate objects one with the other or simple objects for transformation purposes. And there are a lot of them. Here we can see that we have floor, skies, environment, foreground, background, physical sky, and everything we need to set a nice scene or a background or a natural environment and lighting. Cameras are to be found here. We can see more types of cameras, but you will commonly use a simple camera for start. Lights are also important for the scene. 
you can find different types of lights here. We will learn what they do and where we can use them. Other type of tools that cannot be inserted here because it would make the user interface very crowded, we can find here in the main menu. We also have the render settings, for example, we have some mode graphs, some effectors. <clears throat> Most of the tools that you see here are also found under these apps. Let us focus now on the tools and buttons on the left side of the viewport. Some of the tools that we see here can only be used on an object that is not a primitive anymore. This means this object should be made editable. You can do that by pressing the first button here. Now our object can be modified with these tools. These tools I'd like to call modeling and editing tools. For example, we have the points. This means we can use the select tool to select the points in an object. Then we can use what we'll have learned with the movement or the scaling and edit the object manually. As we selected the points to edit the object, we can select the lines from it or we can select the faces of it. Everything is editable and we can modify it as we see fit and as we need it. More objects from the original primitive object that we had. As a quick note, you cannot edit or modify an object with these tools if the object is originally inserted in the scene as a primitive. You have to use the convert button first, then it becomes editable. This small arrow button here enables the access modification for the object. Every object has an axis that is perfectly centered in the middle of it. If we want to move the axis to an edge of the object or a different side, we just have to enable this button. You see now it's pressed and we can move the axis wherever we want. Then when we are sure that we want to keep it there, we just disable the axis button and now the object gets a new position for the axis to move it. Let's focus now on this area here. This area is the manager for the materials. It is empty at the moment because we didn't create any material. To create a simple material, just click create new material or you can just double click here. Now you see we have a material ball. We can edit it as we see fit. We will learn about these buttons and the effects and the layers and everything we can achieve to create a nice and realistic material. But first, let's give it a simple color. And I will show you how to apply a material to an object in the scene. You can drag it on the object or you can drag it in the list here in the right on the object that you see it's selected with yellow. Every material that is used in your scene will appear here as a new material. You can also bring pictures from outside or create glass, metal and all kinds of materials from the original material that you created. This area here above the material manager is called the animation manager. Here we will learn about the frames, timing and keyframes for making an animation. This small area here is the position, size and rotation parameters for the selected objects. For a more precise rotation or sizing of the object, you can just change values here and you will see the transformation. as well for the rotation and position in space. Let's now focus on this area here in the top right. This is the object list. Basically, everything you bring into your scene 
will be added here in the list. Having nothing in our scene, we have nothing in the list. Creating a simple object, we can see it here. Creating a simple light, you can see it also, it's added automatically here. A floor, camera, another object. Everything we have in our, in our scene can be seen here. You have to take to keep track of it because it will get crowded. For a better management of your object list, you can move them by clicking the mouse on it and dragging it wherever you want, or even rename it. And for the last area in our user interface basics tutorial, we have this attribute manager area. In here we can see the properties individual for each selected object. If we have a floor, we can see its properties. If you select the light, you can see its properties. And if you select a camera, you can see its specific properties. You can change this and play with them however you want to achieve your results. Let's get back to the viewport for a second. This is your full screen workspace where you create your scene or your objects. But if you clicked on this button here, you can see that it gets divided into four different work planes. They are actually projections of the same object that you created. We have a top, a front, and the right projection. This work mode allows you to handle your object even more precise than in the perspective viewport. Simply maximize the view you want and do your thing. You can also use the function keys F1 to F5 to switch between the viewports. This concludes our Cinema 4D user interface introduction. Make sure you follow my next videos where we will go more in depth in this software to discover, learn new stuff and see what's up.